so for the stream and are your high standards keeping you from finding love hmm great question so what i'm going to do i'm going to talk about this stuff and then um if you have questions pop them in the chat i promise you i will get to all of your questions have no fear so here's the reason why we need to talk about this lady so if you saw my post today you saw uh, one of my clients and she got married and it was a beautiful wedding she's a beautiful bride um but interestingly enough she kind of you know her way to the altar was you know a little bit of a challenge because she had some work she needed to do to get to where she now found her dream guy and she's getting married so she, when i first met her when she first came to me she was adamant she did not want a guy who traveled she wasn't even going to date a guy who traveled like wanted nothing to do with a guy who traveled and the reason for that was because she had been cheated on by her ex heartbreak devastating ladies we all know the feeling so she'd been treated on so she assumed wrongly that if a man travels then that means he has even more opportunity to be a cheater right so she kind of thought that that was her standard like i am not going to settle i don't care if he travels then he, he i'm not even going to consider him and unfortunately it kind of derailed her for a while and oddly enough funny enough as fate would have it her now husband is actually a guy that she was seeing at the gym had known him casually they'd been kind of in a couple social circles but always dismissed him he was interested in her but she never paid him an ounce of attention why because he traveled and for her that was remember she she had this kind of wrong assumption now watch this she thought it was a standard and so she kept telling herself she was keeping her standards high what she did not realize is it wasn't a standard it was a preference so and worse still it was a preference born out of a bad experience because the only reason she had an issue with it was because of what happened to her with her ex who cheated who didn't even travel he cheated right local up under her nose so here's the challenge with that when you've got preferences born out of a bad experience then you've got to get really clear on what the differences are um because otherwise you're going to show off all wrong you're going to do like what she almost did was you're going to push possibly a good guy away if you do not have that kind of clarity so to answer your question are your high standards keeping you from finding true love the answer is maybe and it's maybe i know right because maybe you are not as clear as you need to be on the difference between what your standards are and what your preferences are. Because your standards are behaviors that are aligned with what you value. Your preferences are like a wish list. I had a client and she, she came to me with, you know, like if you pull out a list, I mean, it was probably 20 pages of everything that she wanted. And she said that, you know, I'm not going to settle and I'm going to have high standards almost everything on that list is we work together most of the stuff on that list were preferences so she had you know height requirements income requirements, I mean, just pretty much a, a, a boatload of things so she kind of attracts this guy and she starts dating him and he was he was resume ready like on paper he looked like a great guy as a corporate attorney six foot two because she had height requirements all kinds of stuff um, he'd been an athlete in college so you know she thought that this was clearly going to be the one because again she's paying all the attention to these preferences and guess what that guy was an emotional midget totally emotionally unavailable i mean just you know it was it was a total disaster disconnect and out of that she learned and recognized that she had to get clear on her standards because she had high preferences and high preferences they will absolutely keep you from finding like like hear me and hear me good they will absolutely keep you from finding true love so 
when you think about your standards, you're thinking about those minimum minimum requirements. Those are your deal breakers. Those are your non-negotiables, like no and no. And it's critical, listen, you have to know what those standards are before you start really seriously dating and trying to connect with someone. Because ladies, let's be real. Once our emotions get into the way and we start feeling some kind of way about him and we're kind of like okay he could be the one then you can't even think straight to get your standards and and try and get the clarity that you should have had beforehand so here's an example of a standard children would be like a standard like you want somebody who wants children who values family um and actually i had a, a young lady who ended up she actually ended up going through a divorce because she was dating a guy he had two children from his first marriage he didn't want more children she did she never had children she wanted a child and she kind of was so you know thinking okay this is the one and i may not find somebody who who loves me and wants to marry me who does want children i'm going to go with this and so she agreed that they wouldn't have more children but guess what that did not stop her from wanting them and then eventually she became resentful the marriage kind of went south and i mean you know now she's in a much better place she's in a great relationship by the way this is a few years ago but the point is that's like a standard so Here's what I need you to know, ladies. The reason why it's so important to do this, because with your standards and know the difference and know how to go about dealing with your standards is because in life, I know this for, I know this for a fact. In life, you do not get what you deserve. You get what you negotiate. So you're like, okay, girl, how do I set my standards to attract God's best? What does this all look like? Give me the lowdown. And there's four things that you absolutely must do. Um, and this is this when I tell you all this, ladies, like I can't stress to you how important this is. This is why I do the work that I do, because I know how much this impacts your ability to actually attract and connect a great guy. In fact, that's that this is probably one of the reasons why I created the Love Life Society that I that I told you all about earlier, because it's so important for me to be able to have the time to teach as many of you as I can about doing this kind of work because it is so important. So the first thing you have to do is to, you got to know your worth. It's not about being perfect. It's about knowing your promise. So you've been promised the desires of your heart. Like that's a birthright promise as a woman of faith, to have the desires of your heart. So you've got to say to yourself, if you are willing to give love, respect, honesty, commitment, consistency, then you should expect that much in return. And you have to give yourself permission to have an entitlement mindset. It's kind of like kingdom thinking, like, why wouldn't, why would I accept less? Why wouldn't I expect that? And you need to make sure that you're expecting it and you're not dating with what I call a deficit mentality where, you know, it's a scarcity. It's like, there's no good guys. I'm not dating anybody. I'm not meeting anybody. You know, that's like that deficit mindset. That was actually my problem. You know, the issues with my mom when my mom abandoned me and then, you know, having that major betrayal by the guy that I was, you know, connected with and thought we were going to spend forever with. You know, when I started dating again, I had such a deficit mindset. And I need you to think about this, ladies. And I know it's hard, but it, I promise you, this is this is the beginning of how you get on the path to find love. You've got to have the mindset that you need to expect the minimum of what you're willing to put out because how can you ever really get what you don't even actually think you deserve? So if you don't deep down inside, this is a heart issue, if you don't deep down inside think you deserve it, how will you ever get it? So you've got to kind of start getting that entitlement, not from a place of arrogance or because I'm so wonderful, but because wait, I, I'm supposed, this is a promise. I'm supposed to experience the desires of my heart. I'm willing to give this love, honesty, commitment, this things that you value. This is what I should expect. You are entitled to a quality relationship, a man who's going to give you what you want. 
And then believing that you're entitled to it, that's the first step in creating one when you know you deserve it. And so what it does is it frees you up to set high standards. Again, because now you have clarity. You're not setting high preferences. You're setting high standards. Second thing you have to do is you have to set your standards with wisdom. And this is probably some of the most important work that I do with my clients. Like you've got to use wisdom as you're setting your standards and make sure that you get really, really clear about, you know, am I am I using wisdom with this? Like when I'm thinking about a meaningful long-term relationship, not, you know, just some short, hey, I met a guy, we had a great time, you know, you know, kind of a, a situation ship or Netflix and chill, whatever you call that, or a texting thing. But I'm talking about a meaningful long-term relationship. You've got to make sure you're using wisdom, knowing who you are, you know, that's again the work that has to be done you've got to know exactly who you are because you'll have so much focus on how to get him and you won't know who you are but guess what you can't get the right mr right for you if you don't have that clarity what do you value you know write these things down what are the things you refuse to live without like maybe you refuse to live without somebody who's a person of faith you know what are the things you refuse to live with maybe you refuse to you know have a smoker whatever those things you need to get so clear on them. And I love having you journal and write things down. That's one of the things I do with my clients when I'm giving them homework. It's like, write it down. Let's actually go through it and see what are standards. And then what you're going to do is be able to determine what are your wish list items. Because there's nothing wrong with having a wish list, but a wish list item are the things you will negotiate. For example, maybe you want a guy who's, I don't know, 6'5". And you meet a guy and he's great and he has all the standards that you have set out for your values and he's 6'1". Well, that's negotiable, right? So then you have your wish list items, you know, maybe things like culture. You know, maybe he's from a different culture. Maybe he's geographically located somewhere else. Whatever that is, those become the wish list items. And then the third thing you have to do, ladies is you have to communicate your standards with what I call unwavering grace. Unwavering grace, which means you are firm. You are not kind of a pushover like, well, you know, I, I, I kind of wish you would be honest about it. It's firm, but also it's a, you're not a pushover, but you are also not like sister soldier, like, look, dude, this is what this is what I want. This is what I expect. This is what you have to do. Again, neither of those extremes, it's unwavering grace. It's firm, but it's kind. And then the last thing you have to do is you have to enforce them with dignity. You are not begging him for anything. You're not begging him to treat you right, to be emotionally available, whatever you value. You're not begging him. You don't beg. You don't beg for anything because you believe God for everything. And you know you, again, you know you deserve everything you've been promised. So you're doing it. You're enforcing them with dignity. Okay. And what that does, ladies, it starts to like, it's how you influence. These are the things that influence and teach people how to meet your standards. So what ends up happening is you're going to attract a really quality guy because he's going to want to rise to those standards. It's kind of like hashtag rise up. Like he's going to want to rise to those standards because of how you're showing up. And conversely, if you aren't good with setting your standards, if you aren't clear on your standards, if you don't know how to really kind of go about it, then guess what's going to happen? Every guy you meet, every guy you attract, he's going to treat you to the level of his comfort zone. So wherever he's comfortable, that's how he's going to treat you. But guess what? That means that basically that joker is probably not going to meet your needs. You're not going to be happy. You're not going to feel fulfilled. You know, it's going to be one of those things where you end up settling because he's now operating at his comfort zone versus the standard that you have set and how you are showing up where he now wants to rise up. So I need you to start treating yourself the way you expect Mr. Wright to treat you, because here's what you got to remember, ladies. From the moment you say hello to him, you are teaching him how to treat you. And you need to make sure the lessons 
or what you want him to learn for the long haul, like five years from now, 10 years from now, five months from now. Okay, so that is the answer to the question that maybe your standards are too high, but it's because you're confusing standards with preference and you don't know how to go about having the standards that actually are aligned with your values so that you can start influencing and attracting the kind of guy you want.